Hello, everybody out there, and welcome to another session of the Professional Mindset Series with American Heritage College. Uh, as you know, I'm Dr. Terry Ferris, and today I have a wonderful, awesome colleague of mine, uh, David Ewan. Uh, David has a Master's of Education and has been teaching uh, since 1988. He began his entrepreneurial career in 1994 when he launched his publishing house in Boston, Massachusetts. He was the founding director of the New England, no, I don't know what that means, but New England Publishers Association in 1998, now operating today as the independent publishers of New England. During his 11 year period from 2004 to 2015, he toured the seven states of New York and New England presenting the Professor Lecture Series. He served that at 52 venues, presenting 18 topics in entrepreneurial studies and digital multimedia technology. Today, David is an international entrepreneurial, entrepreneur, excuse me, today is just not my day, with a focus on entrepreneurial studies, educational development, and then technology advancement. So David, I do apologize for just destroying your bio, but I tell you, my friend, it is great to have you here with me. Uh, I love bringing new people, new faces to the, to the series, and I love your logo and your background. I don't quite have a boardroom behind me. I'm just a plain Jane here today. So David, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Ferris. It's great to be yes. with you today. There's a lot of things to talk about um, yeah. in terms of what you've been talking about in this wonderful series that you've been doing for quite some time. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that compliment. Well, then let's do this. Let's just dive right in. Um, so, David, as you mentioned, you've watched the series on many occasion, uh, occasions. To you, what is your definition of professional mindset? I think I learned that a while ago, and I'll tell you how it happened. Okay. Um, after college I, and before my master's, I was working at the corporate headquarters of a bank in the Boston area. Mm. And uh, it, there was a rumor at the time that the Royal Bank of Scotland was going to buy out the bank. Now, at that time, I had the, the mindset, see, we're talking about the mindset, yeah. that I would start at a corporate headquarters of a company work for 50 years there, get the gold watch and retire. Yeah. Well, when that rumor came about, which never held true, but when the rumor came out, I had to stop what I was doing. Yes. I went to the cafeteria. I got a cup of tea. Normally I drink coffee. I even changed. I got a cup of tea and I had to stop. And I had to think about what that would mean, not only for my future, but for my future's future. So what I learned is that we live in a world of change. And we live in a world of change because of politics. We live in a world of change because of technology, certainly the pandemics. Um, and uh, so with that understanding of change, a professional mindset is the acknowledgement that there's change. And with that change, how do you manage it in a mature way so that you can be productive rather than be a complainer? How can you manifest positive results? That is the, that is, uh, the professional mindset. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, you kind of reminded me. It's very interesting. I, uh, when I graduated college, I was fortunate to find a position right out of college, which again, these days can be difficult, but it was also in the field of short-term finance loans. That's the company it was. I won't give the name, um, but anyway, I get there. And as you said, the real world hit me two and a half months in, they decided to merge with another uh, well-known banking organization who is still in existence today. And the next thing I know is this fresh out of college young guy is the world of layoff right away, right out of college. And like you said, you, you, you think about the mindset. Now, unfortunately, 
I was that young guy right out of college. And I said, well, hmm, I'll just sneak back into my college kind of ideas since I just finished anyway. Didn't have the right mindset. So for you, my friend, I, to develop the mindset was very good for you. So, uh, so kudos to you. So both you and I, we are, we are well-seasoned individuals. That's the word I like to use now these days. I, that, and... That's better than any other alternative. <laughs> so yes, we are seasoned. There we go, right? <laughs> However, I think I might be more seasoned than you. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. That's okay, though. That's I'd like to maybe you... not. That makes yes. me feel better. <laughs> there you go. See? Um, so tell me, how is the professional mindset, you know, after you found that there, how has it played a part in your career for you? Well, you know, there was something called um, uh, the principles of the models of excellence, uh, which okay. over uh, starting a business in 1994 and mm -hmm. starting a trade association in 1998 and becoming an author and then lecturing at uh, universities. And now I'm uh, a United States ambassador in the private sector. So I really get to see the world. And so I've encompassed something called the models of excellence. And I'm the kind of person who likes to remember things. Um, I think you and I privately in another meeting, we sort of chatted about it, but yeah. uh, for the audience, I'm gonna share it with you again. Um, and, it, and I use acronyms to remember things. Mm -hmm. And so I take a look at the word model. See, it's models of excellence, M-O-D-E-L-S. And each letter represents something. The M is the motivation. It's the get up and go. The organization is, is your planning and your strategy. The discipline is staying focused right on track and not having uh, the distractions uh, that other people cause or the interruptions that you cause. Um, and then there's the ethics. It's knowing the difference between right and wrong. As I told you, there's a lot of change that happens in the world. And, and very often people lose track of the difference between right and wrong. So I put ethics in there. Um, and then also the, the letter L stands for lifelong learning. And here we are at American Heritage College. We're focused on that, uh, not only at American Heritage College, but also in my business and also uh, around the world, um, that the world keeps changing. Now, you hear the word that, or the phrase that the world keeps changing, but what people aren't talking about is the accelerated change. Yes. And so you have that divide, those who get it and those who don't. Mm -hmm. and, and and that divide seems to be growing. And so we need to be able to pull that together. That's why I talk about lifelong uh, learning. And the S at the end is the strength to not give up because it's so easy to throw in the towel. So mm -hmm. that's the models of excellence. And, and the, the, the number seven, because I call it the seven pillars mm -hmm. uh, of the models of excellence, it's a combination. For example, the motivation goes well with the discipline. Mm -hmm. So whenever I do a lecture and, and, and I'm doing something introductory, that's what I talk about. I talk about the models of excellence. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That is, that is great. Um, so for me, I often talk of, and especially in one of my courses, I, I talk about how to get back to, to a professional mindset or or how to overcome those those things that happen to us right during the day when we're at work um the the one thing you were kind of talking about is the the discipline and you were talking kind of alluding to one of the things there's a book that i've, I've read before uh, and it talks about the whirlwinds that we deal with for the day and they can get us out of you know just out of our the path of what we're working on anyway uh, what I'd like to find out is why do you think that the mindset, the professional mindset is important for people to use in their daily lives? Well, as I talked about that divide, um, yeah. what we have to do is we have to be able to adapt to change um, and to be able to evolve. Um, as I mentioned before, the world is changing with politics, with uh, technology, and it's so easy for us to give up. That's why I have strength as one of 
yeah. uh, the, the models of uh, excellence. Um, all of us, as we become seasoned, I like that word you used, yeah. as we become seasoned, we have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me say the word responsibility? The yeah. responsibility is to be a mentor to those others that are just coming Absolutely. into the ranks. Yeah. And with that responsibility is a structured learning process and teaching process. Yeah. The reason why I called it a learning process is we have to give the learning process to the one that is learning. Mm -hmm. Then what we, we do is as teachers or mentors, we have to apply that process and we have to sort of pull them up um, and, and that's everyone. That's everyone. I'm not, I'm not measuring uh, any metrics on intelligence levels or anything like that. I, I think all of us need to be a family and help out one another um, because we live in a very difficult, challenging times. Look at uh, what we see in the news at this hour about supply chains uh, disruptions. That's affecting logistic divisions. That's affecting manufacturing that's affecting our seaports. And uh, the senior management, uh, the CEOs of those type of organizations are having a great struggle. So the seasoned individuals can mentor those to demonstrate that with every problem, with every challenge, there's an opportunity. I know it sounds cliche. I know it's, I've been hearing it for yeah. decades, yeah. but, but being the seasoned individuals, we have to show what the, that's our responsibility is to demonstrate what those opportunities are. Yeah, and, it, and it's interesting you were talking about the how quickly the advancements are occurring and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna give a quick, you know, I, I went to the bank yesterday because I needed a new card, which means I spend money too quickly because my, my debit card quit working the chip, right? Because that mm -hmm. happens, that's life. Anyway, I go into the bank, they start to help me, but then they say, oh, we've got to get you checked in. I'm here. I'm right here sitting with you. You got to get you checked in. And she goes, I know, but it's our system. So with that system now, they sent me a text and I did everything via text, my check-in and all of that. And I thought about it, as we talk about divide, there's obviously that term digital divide that's occurring these days. Mm -hmm. But this is really relevant because I said to the young lady, I said, you know, thank goodness I know technology and I know how to use it. I said, if you'd have done this to my stepfather, he would have said, close my account. He would have said, close my account. But again, that's because we've got to think of the solutions and think of every party we're dealing with especially when it comes to our leaders and things. You, you just said it, the supply chain, the leaders right now, these executives, they got to think about everybody because it is, it's a cycle. And now everybody is impacted by the things that are occurring. So we have to come together and do that. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I thought about that and I was like, wait a minute, that just happened yesterday. So uh, see how easy it is to get me distracted. Ah, see, I like it. use your models. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so as you know, we're talking about the professional mindset. So what do you see as the mindset, the professional mindset of the future? Let's say the 2030s, for example. Well, um, one of the things that we have to do today is to imagine ourselves in the future. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I'll, uh, I'll be like you, I'll tell you a story. I like yes, stories. I love stories. Um, I was uh, teaching a class on Windows 8. Do you remember Windows 8? Oh, um, oh. Very I think actually the company I worked with, we skipped. We went from XP to 10 because we did not like 8, right? So, oh wait, no, we had to go to, to 7, but we kind of just stuck to XP until we had to move anyway. <laughs> and most people did that. And most people who bought computers with uh, Windows 8 uh, didn't like it. And I did not have Windows 8 uh, at my business or at, at home. But I, if, I made money off of it because I could teach it. I, so what happened was I was teaching Windows 8. 
um, at, at an institution, uh, mm -hmm. an evening class. And I usually arrive. It was a more of a three hour master class. Okay. And um, I arrive early and no one was there. And so I go to the shelf and I grab a book and I look at a book uh, by Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft. Ah, and, he, yes. and, and he's talking about how inexpensive computers will be. He talked about mobile computing um, and, and things like that. Um, and I was teaching this class um, I would say in 2015. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And um, in 2015, I, I was showing people that what Bill Gates had predicted. And the book was published in 1995. So in 1995 was when Bill Gates was explaining to people that we'll live a life of people working at home. It's in his book. And I don't remember yes. the name of the book. But it, what I was demonstrating was the change in technology. And I told people, if you don't like Windows 8, it's like the weather in New England. If you don't like the weather in New wait a day, it's going to change. Really? And it did. You notice Windows 8 didn't last very long. No. Um, but but um, I, I share that side story to demonstrate the fact that there are visionaries um, who are able to predict what the future is going to be like. That's a new soft skill that senior leaders need to develop. Um, yeah. It's taught, but it needs to be developed to be more common. We need to have, and we're talking about professional mindsets. We all need to be visionaries that we live in a world of change. We mm -hmm. see the trend. If you were to sort of in your mental mind, draw this picture, this exponential growing graph of the change in, in culture, the change yeah. in technology. What does that mean for you? Uh, recently, Windows 11 was announced and launched on uh, uh, Oct uh, October 5th. Yes. Uh, Facebook, uh, through The Verge, reported yeah. in The Verge, is <laughs> announcing the, uh, and I don't know, uh, yeah. as we broadcast this on the 22nd of October, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder, is going to be working on um, the a new metaverse? version of Facebook, Something. metaverse. Yeah. Well, what it is, is, um, is we, we understand that the internet, yeah. uh, the internet is a sharing of content. Right. The metaverse as it's defined is the sharing of experiences. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, that makes sense for a proper ev uh, evolution. Mm -hmm. History repeats itself. And that's how we can look at what the future is. You look at the past. Yeah. For example, uh, first there was newspapers. After newspapers, there was the instantaneous news, which was the radio. After the radio, there was the television, totally different experience with the picture yeah. that like went with the radio sound. But did you notice when television came out, radio didn't go away. When right. radio came, newspapers didn't go away. It changed a bit. So what we have is these other sets of technology that will be added that we will use and it will become necessary. Yes. Uh, for example, when you leave your house and you don't have your cell phone, don't you feel naked? Oh, absolutely, but, yes. yes. But when I was in college in uh, the late 70s and early 80s, I didn't feel naked without a cell phone because there was no cell phone That's right. and I turned out okay, or at least I hope I did. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, no, and you know what? I love what you just said because uh, having studied education technology, when I share with people that this right here at one point was technology, people look at you like it's a pen. Ah, but before they had this, what did they, you know, how difficult could it have been? But anyway, I digressed a little bit, but thank you for sharing that analogy. And oh, by the way, um, one of the things that we had to deal with when we were a little younger, you know how they say something old is new again? Yes. So I don't know if you've kind of realized the popularity of records. I've got a 14 year old that loves records. Listening to cassettes. How about that? Yes. Cassettes, CDs. And you're just like, wait a minute, they got all the digital music now. Why? 
No, what that tells me is again, our seasoning is showing <laughs> because it's coming it back around. It's cyclical, right? Anyway, but doctor, don't don't be afraid because the as you said, uh, what's old is becomes new again. Vinyl records came back because yeah. of that analog audio sound That's has true. that more orchestra feeling That's than true. what digital could possibly do. Not yeah. that I have a vinyl record player. <laughs> I, I did in my past. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now, is it true that you're uh, an ordained minister? Well, yes. Um, what happened was um, uh, I was part of a group of people that helped to form a church um, back in 2012, but I wasn't uh, a minister. Um, Pastor Jose and Pastor Melly Martinez of the Resurrection Center in Springfield, Massachusetts, are the, of course, the ordained ministers of the Resurrection Center. What happened a few days ago is we were um, ordained by surprise. My, I say we, my wife and I together, um, we were uh, or, ordained um, and it'll be public. Well, I say public, it was publicly announced, but it'll be sort of officially celebrated uh, in a few weeks. But we were ordained, uh, so let's say Friday, less than a week ago. <laughs> wow. But, okay. So it's kind of new. Prior to, it, it, yes, uh, in terms of that, it, it's new. But uh, before that, I, I do head up uh, the Bravehearted Men's Ministry. So I've been running a ministry for okay. uh, three years. Uh, my wife works with uh, the, uh, the woman on um, uh, a, a program every Friday morning um, and, uh, or every other Friday morning. And, uh, and I work with the men. We, my wife and I are coming together to do a special event um on uh november 5th um so uh but we're excited uh yeah. to be able to be ordained a, at the same time everybody yeah. go oh no that's great that's right everybody out there go ah well how do you think that the uh your career and mindset or how this how's this helped you really this what you've been through well, you know, one of the things that, that happens uh, at, at any church uh, that, that mm -hmm. is uh, blessed by God uh, is that we operate with something called biblical principles. Mm -hmm. And biblical principles is the understanding of what's right and wrong as defined in the Bible. Um, but the Bible is a very complex mechanism, and that's why it's something that needs to be taught in an experience follows uh, through. I'm kind of giving the academic definition of that. Yeah. There's obviously more, but I'm, I'm just giving sort of the academic un understanding of, of that. Um, and so um, I, I, I believe just having that as part of my life and also my wife along with me has kept me with, as I share with you, it helped me also to find uh, the models of excellence, the motivation, the organization, the discipline, the ethics, the lifelong learning, uh, and the strength not to give up. Nice. Very good. Uh, you're also an ambassador professor. So for those out there who are not sure what that means, why don't you share what, what an ambassador professor does and what it means? Um, uh, the, the best way to describe it is the history of how I evolved into the position. It was something that I never looked for or asked for. And many things in life you don't ask for, it, but it happens. <laughs> but, but this was a good thing. This was a good thing. Um, we, we spoke before, um, or you mentioned it in the bio, um, mm -hmm. uh, in New York and New England, New England being the six Northeast uh, states, um, I was a touring professor, kind of like a visiting professor at 52 yeah. uh, venues. And that went for about 11 years till about uh, the year 2015. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 11 years doing a lot of traveling, uh, that's a, a long time. So the online world started to really evolve. Um, so I got connected with NTT Learning Systems in Japan. NTT is the largest communications company in Japan. And we were doing a business education program. And that was done online. So it was uh, my morning and their night. Yes. Well, that evolved to Vietnam, uh, then all of Asia, um, and then 
it, we went to the Middle East. Um, so we did a lot with Saudi Arabia, we still do. Um, then Europe and Russia. Um, and then before reaching Latin America, we won three awards. Um, and, uh, and so now we're doing, I, I think I mentioned it all, it's, it's Asia, primarily China, uh, Japan, Vietnam, um, South Korea. Um, and then of course the Middle East, mostly Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Right. Um, and then Europe and Russia, and then uh, Latin America. And when I say Latin America, I'm talking about Mexico and everything south. I see. Uh, Brazil, Colombia, uh, et cetera. Okay. Wonderful. Um, so that's, that's what an ambassador professor is, a person who represents the education to yeah. the nations. So right. I, I'm in the private sector, and the three areas I focus on is business, education and technology. Um, the technology is the space exploration. Business is uh, for entrepreneurs and startups. And for education, we work on educational uh, development. We, start, we created a, an online school in Russia. Uh, there was a time we were serving as a dean of teachers in China. Yeah. Um, so that, that's uh, basically what it is. Well, you are a well-traveled man virtually. So that virtually, is a wonderful yes. thing. Yes, 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 yes. Well, you know, you, you, we were just talking about the online, you were talking about space a little bit. So we hear so much about space tourism, you know, SpaceX, Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin. How are you involved in this space exploration industry? I think I was born into it. Um, ah. I, I, I was born in 63, six years before man walked on the moon. Mm -hmm. um, but my father was a, a space explorer. Um, in 1951, he discovered that there's hydrogen in space. And he did this uh, as part of his doctoral thesis at Harvard University. Um, and in layman's term, what it was is uh, just on the fourth floor of the Lyman Physics Laboratory, it was this rectangular horn antenna that's, um, it, it, it's like a, a telescope, but yeah. not a visual telescope. It was a radio telescope. So it's a telescope of radio frequencies. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was designed specifically to detect um, the frequency and the wavelength that hydrogen emits between stars. Wow. So to explain hydrogen, hydrogen's one proton. Mm -hmm. And there's there's one electron going around. Okay. The the polarity is, uh, for the proton is like this, and then for the electron it's like this. Well, every once in a while there's a flip in the electron. So instead of being attracted like gravity, mm -hmm. it repels. But doing that, it emits a very faint, a very light light radio signal that is very specific. Wow. And, and then it's measurable. Now, if you can detect that, then without getting fancy with the explanation, what you can do is look at the properties of hydrogen as it relates to other stars, mm -hmm. and you can map galaxies that way. So uh, that detection uh, was done in 1951, and in 1952, the Milky Way galaxy, the galaxy our planet yeah. is, is in, was mapped. And so uh, it was because of what was done in 1951 uh, that we were able to see our galaxy. So yeah. that's space exploration. The way I got involved uh, was I got involved after my father had passed in uh, 2015. I was doing some work in Russia uh, with uh, a well-known scientist. Um, and he was saying, you should do something about some sort of celebration because we're coming up on the 70th anniversary of this detection, which would have been the year 2021. Yeah. So in the summer of 2019, um, I knew that Harvard University has a radio astronomy program uh, because my father created it. Um, and so I reached out to them and they were very surprised that Doc Ewan's son was 
was, you know, someone reached out to them, uh, yeah. a person of, of history. And we, we had planned the summer of 2019 to do something um, the following year, you know, be on stage, awards would be presented, you know, a thousand people in a stadium. Or and something let me guess like what that. happened. Pandemic. Yep. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but, but in the same spirit of my father's thinking, um, yeah. and as I shared in the models of excellence, I didn't give up. Yeah. So um, we still ran the project all the way through the anniversary, which was 2001. And I'm looking at it. Uh, we got, uh, um, I'm, I'm pointing up, not to the sky, but to my wall. I see. Uh, a citation from the Commonwealth of uh, Massachusetts signed by the governor. And over here is a proclamation to the city of Springfield, Massachusetts, so that Springfield, which is called, it has the nickname of the city of first because it has the Basketball Hall of Fame. Basketball was invented yes. in Springfield, Massachusetts. Well, it's, it, uh, that's where my father grew up. So this is where space exploration really began before rockets, before satellites. Yes. Um, so I, I wrote a book, uh, Space, the Final Frontier. Um, also, uh, as uh, something that started before that, I had an opportunity to work with NASA. NASA was giving the opportunity for people to have their name etched on a silicon ship that would be transported on the Perseverance rover that landed on the planet Mars earlier this year. Wow. So my name and my father's name uh, is on Mars. So not only am I virtually speaking to you here, that's right. Um, I'm virtually on Mars as well. <laughs> that is actually that's very cool. So hey, that kudos to you and kudos to your dad. That is that is wonderful that he played such an important part of history. That is wonderful. That I'm, I'm happy that we were able to report the story because as, yeah. as the book was written and as the awards were presented by the city and the state, Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic and SpaceX are now becoming popular. So yes. um, I thought it would be a good time to share um, that space exploration really did happen before rockets and satellites. Yeah, absolutely. That's true, that's true. Well, as you know, um, before we end up closing the, the show for the day, is there anything else you would like to share with our uh, wonderful viewers out there? Anything else you'd like to, you know, I like to give a chance to promote or anything else that you would love to, to give to them? You know, I, I, I want to share with uh, what I share with young people and then people who are a little bit along in their career. So there's a couple of things. When I talk to a young person about uh, their education, they're, they're about to go into college, or maybe they're already into college, I don't ask if they're considering a master's degree. I ask them, where will they go for their master's degree? Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can have your car repossessed. You can foreclose on your home. Uh, the Department of Social Services can take your kids away but your education can never be taken away from you. Mm -hmm. And we, you and I, we spoke earlier about the uh, evolutionary and also the exponential growth of change in the world we give. And yeah. I believe that the education you get is something that can't be taken away from you. So, you know, while you're younger, you know, um, you know before you're higher in a career at a position at the company, maybe before you're married, you know, before you have too many responsibilities, get that out of the way. Um, I was speaking to another client that um, when I got my master's degree, I had two years off after my uh, bachelor's before going into my master's and then finished my uh, master's when I was 24. It was a time before I started my business. I wasn't married. I didn't have you know a senior level position at a job. I was in IT. Uh, I loved it. Um, but uh, there, there comes a time that after you gain a little maturity and you get a sense of the world and the industry you're in, um, then some people go after a, a, a master's degree. Now yeah. I'm talking to you about uh, specifically a master's degree. Um, I'm not saying that because I have one. Yeah. Um, uh, certainly uh, you have a doctorate, uh, which is uh, the symbol of contribution. 
Um, uh, what I'm talking about is arm yourself with the education to help you with the changing world. Um, because we live in a world where countries are competing against each other. And, um, and we live in a global society. Um, people work from home and work around the country. I do. I work, you know, uh, Europe, Asia, Middle East, Latin America. I'm everywhere. I do very little. The only thing I do in the United States is at American Heritage College. And that only started October 1st. <laughs> That's right. That's true. You are. Yeah, you're new with the group. And, and it's, uh, it's one of those things that I think it's only going to continue that way, which you know, I, I love that you shared that because what I would love to tell the viewers out there is um, not only pay attention to American Heritage College, but uh, coming up in the future weeks, months, you're going to see some updates from us, the group that will say owns American Heritage College. And what David is saying is, is true, and I'm going to share that we are going to be offering products to let you choose what you want to learn about. And the cool thing about it is we're going to set it up to where you can do it on your time. It, uh, it'll be excellent, great, and you can just do it on a monthly basis. We're going to set up a subscription model. So it's going to be a wonderful product that we are developing in the future. But I'll give you guys more about that once we get further along, right? I can't really tell you everything now because top secret no just though stay tuned working. more to come that's right more to come well listen david thank you again for being on the the show with me it was a wonderful discussion your knowledge my friend is great the information you shared is just beautiful and i thank you for your time so much thank you doctor you're very welcome all right my friends please remember if you can you want to like subscribe and share. Okay. So everyone take care.